Hello folks. This is Storm Runners number three, The Eruption, and we're starting the second quadrant. We're reading it with permission from um, Scholastic. It's 1252 p.m. Stop the truck, Nicole shouted. Why, John asked. Because I need to puke, Mark said. I'm serious, Nicole insisted. I saw something. John put the brakes on and Nicole was out of the cab before the truck came to a complete stop. I'm serious about puking, Mark said. Take care of it outside the cab while I find out what Nicole is up to. The trail they had been following was slippery and narrow. They'd already gotten stuck twice, but both times John had managed to get the truck loose without using the winch. He caught up to Nicole 50 yards into the woods on the downhill side of the trail. What did you see? I'm not sure. Nicole scanned the thick trees. It was just a glimpse of something or someone. We're at least a mile above the highway and several miles from the nearest village. It's not likely that anyone would be wandering this far above the... The ground shook. John grabbed Nicole and pulled her down to the base of a tree, shielding her from the dead branches raining down. The tremor sounded like a freight train barreling right past them. John counted the seconds. When he reached nine, the tremor stopped, followed by complete silence, as if the forest was holding its breath, waiting. You okay, he asked. I think so. Nicole sat up and brushed the pine needles out of her black hair. John looked up the hill and shouted, are you alive, Mark? Barely, Mark shouted back. Oh no, the ground had started to shaking again. The truck continued to shake after Tomas had stopped. St. Christopher and two of Tomas's children fell off the dash. Four cracks appeared in front of the truck as if a giant invisible cat paw had scratched the road. I like the way that he uses figurative language and kind of puts pictures in your mind with the words that he chooses. That's what good authors do. Whoa, Chase said. I think that was the second tremor, Cindy said. We couldn't feel the first one because the truck was moving. Tomas put St. Christopher back on the dash and replaced the photos of the two children. Everyone got out of the cab to take a closer look at the cracks. Not too bad, Tomas said. We can get around. All at once, each of their satellite phones started ringing. Chase was about to hit talk when he remembered the Bluetooth in his ear and tapped it instead. Are you guys okay? Chase jumped when he heard his father's voice directly in his ear. We're fine, Cindy said. Chase could hear her speaking out loud and in his ear at the same time. He walked a short distance away to avoid the echo. There are some cracks in the road, but Tomas thinks we can go around them. Where are you? about 12 miles from the bridge overland, an hour and a half by road. The bridge was out. We're trying to get around it and drop back down to the highway. It's tough going, but we're making progress. How's Nicole, Chase asked. Shaken, Nicole answered in her earpiece. This is really neat that they all have earpieces and they can all be on this conference call. Chase laughed. It was going to take him a while to get used to the fact that everyone was listening in. Nicole thought she saw something in the woods, so we stopped. Lucky we did. The truck slid about five feet during that last tremor. I'm going to have to winch it back up onto the trail. Don't worry about Mark, Mark chimed in. He was crushed by the truck, but it means more food for all of you. It was Cindy's turn to laugh. Did you get video? Of my death? Yeah. Good. Seriously, are you okay? I'm fine. I was on the other side of the truck when it slid off the trail, and the camera was rolling. So were my bowels. That means his stomach was churning and too much information, Mark. Don't worry, I didn't get any footage of that. You did hear that I said trail instead of road, right? I heard. Lightning John is up to his old tricks, blazing trails like Meriwether Lewis. Why are we down here again? We won't know till it's over, Cindy said. Perfect. We better get going, John interrupted. We have to winch the truck back up, contact Mark's next of kin, and then bury him. I think the mountain's going to take care of that for you, Mark said. Lightning John laughed and ended the call. 1.06 p.m. Landslide, Tomas said. When he spoke in English, it was usually just one word sentences. A huge landslide, Chase said. A 15 foot pile of boulders and uprooted trees covered the road. How far is Lago, Cindy asked. Nine or 10 miles. They got out of the truck. Chase started to climb the pile. What are you doing? Cindy called after him, checking to see how far it goes. Be careful. Yes, Ma. 
uh, ma'am, I'll be fine. Did I almost say mom? He scrambled up the loose scree as if he were trying to get away from the idea. What's up with that? He reached the top and looked at the debris pile. It was extensive, 50 yards, maybe more. It would take a road crew a week to move it, a dangerous job. They'd have to stop at the top of the slide and work their way down. If the pile shifted or if there was another earthquake, Chase suddenly realized the precarious position he was in and quickly climbed back down. Precarious means dangerous. What's it look like, Cindy asked. It's a mess. We're not getting past it and no one from Lago is either. We were lucky we weren't driving by when this let go. I couldn't see very far beyond the slide, but there might be more slides up ahead. We're going to have to go around. Chase looked at Tomas to see how much he had understood. Apparently he'd understood enough because he switched on his sat phone and was consulting the GPS. When he finished, he showed the screen to them and traced the alternate route he wanted to take. All of it was off road. It might be best if we unload the quad, Chase said. Tomas nodded. I can ride up ahead of you and make sure the path is clear. Crank the steering wheel to the left, John told Mark. Keep your foot off the brake. When I tell you, give it a little gas, but don't let the wheels spin. If it starts to slide, we'll lose the truck. In fact, we should unload everything in case we do lose the truck. That way we'll still have the quad and our supplies. How many people can ride on the quad? Mark asked. Two, but there are three of us. If we lose the truck, there won't be three of us because you'll be inside the truck. John pointed down the steep hill, wherever it ends up. Maybe Nicole would like to do the truck thing. I'd be happy to, Nicole said, except I told her dad that I'd try and keep her safe, John said. Mark pulled his phone out of his pocket. Wanna call my dad? John smiled. Give me a hand unloading the quad. So he's teasing, he doesn't really think Mark's gonna die. I'm going to look around, Nicole said. I know I saw something. Don't wander too far, John said, and take your bag with you. Nicole walked back to where she thought she had seen something. Whatever it is, she thought, uncertain why, it was so important. No, whatever it is, she thought. She wondered why she thought it was so important. Mr. Masters probably thinks I'm insane. She had seen it out of the corner of her eye past Mark's head on the passenger side. By the time she'd leaned forward, it had vanished into the trees. She scanned the forest for a familiar landmark. There, an old tree blown over by the wind or down by lightning. She walked towards it. Halfway there, she saw a movement behind the splintered stump and stopped. She knew better than to walk up to a wild animal in the woods if that's what it was. She waited and watched. In the distance, she heard the truck start and John shouting instructions to Mark. It moved again. A human-like face peered out from behind the stump. It was Chico, Chiquita's twin brother. He was baring his teeth in a fear grimace. She didn't blame him. Earthquakes were scary. So was being lost in the woods and separated from the show. She couldn't imagine what was going through the young chimp's mind, but she knew exactly what was going through her own. Chico's bizarre appearance here meant that her mother and sister had to be nearby. It also meant that animals had escaped from the circus trucks and the show was almost certainly in trouble. Nicole sat down on the ground and averted her gaze to make herself appear less threatening, but she looked away so that it didn't look like she was staring him down. If it had been Chiquita peeking out from behind the stump, Nicole would have walked up to her with open arms, calling her name, but she didn't know Chico that well. If she walked towards him, he was liable to run away. The only thing to do was to wait for him to get over his fear and approach her. If only I had some food, I could... And then she remembered the go bag. Very slowly, she slipped the small black pack off her shoulder. Chico watched her suspiciously, but didn't run. He showed a little more of his body as she unzipped a side pocket and pulled out an energy bar. Hungry? Chico stepped completely out from behind the stump. Me too. Nicole started to unwrap the bar. Chico took a tentative step forward. You recognize my voice, don't you? Chico gave a quiet woot. That's what I thought. Nicole took a bite out of the bar and held the rest out to him. You want some? Woot. Well, you're going to have to come and get it because I'm not bringing it to you. And you better make it quick. 
this train's about to leave the station. There's not really a train, that's a metaphor. 2.15 p.m. Chase stopped the quad and waited for Tomas and Cindy to catch up. They had dropped below the slide and had managed to get past it without mishap. Now the hard part. He looked up the hill. It was a half a mile climb back up the road with no guarantee there wouldn't be more slides blocking their way to Lago. Chase's eyes stung and his mouth was dry from what he thought was dust. As the truck bounced towards him through the trackless forest, he saw that Tomas had his wipers on. The windshield was streaked with a gray slurry, the color of cement. Not dust, ash. Tomas and Cindy got out of the truck. Tomas opened the crew cab door and pulled out a roll of toilet paper. All's free, Tomas said. Chase looked at Cindy. Toilet paper? I think Ausfri means brimstone, Cindy explained. He's talking about volcanic ash. I have no idea why he has the toilet paper. Tomas popped the hood, removed the air filter, and shook out a cloud of gray ash. He wrapped the filter in toilet paper, put it back in, and did the same to the air filter on the quad. He handed the toilet paper roll to Chase. And remember I told you that we took nylon stockings and we put them over the top of that to keep the volcanic ash from um, getting into the motors of cars. Wrap every 10 miles or the quad, it will stop. Sure. Chase put the roll in his go bag and pulled out the respirator. You need something for your eyes, Cindy told him. Tomas ran to the back of the truck, rummaged through the toolbox and came back with a pair of eye protectors and a roll of duct tape. He covered the perforated sides of the glasses with tape and handed them to Chase. Thanks, de nada. I think you should stay down here with the truck while I go up and check the road to see if there are any more landslides. Chase took the sat phone out of his pocket. I'll call you if it's clear. Tomas nodded. Cindy looked doubtful. There's no point in driving the truck up to the road if it isn't clear. Chase took his helmet off so he could put on the mask and glasses. He had to leave the Bluetooth in his pocket because the helmet wouldn't fit over it. I don't like the idea of us splitting up. Chase put his helmet back on. I've been driving a quad since I was five years old, but not during an eruption. I'm worried about this ash. Chase was too. He looked up through the trees. It had gotten darker in the last hour and the gray against the sky was not a thundercloud. It won't take me long. Chase swung onto the quad and started up the hill towards the road. Nicole walked up to the truck with Chico in her arms. The young chimp was happily munching his third energy bar. I told you there was a chimp, Mark said. So you did, John said. Chico, Nicole said, Chiquita's twin brother. Where does Chico ride when the circus is traveling? In the clown truck. Semi? Nicole nodded. Two drivers. They haul most of the wardrobe for the show, portable dressing rooms, props. The clowns follow the semi in campers and trailers. What are the chances of Chico getting loose on his own? Just about zero. When he's not performing, he's in a harness with a leash. No harness, Mark said. They take it off when they put him in the cage. Then we can assume the clown truck has had an accident, John said. What other animals would the circus be transporting? Lions, tigers, bears, camels, elephants, and dogs. Dogs, Mark asked. 32 of them, mostly poodles. Teacup to standard, it's the show's most popular act. How far can a chimp travel in a day, John asked. I don't know, but what worries me is why did he travel anywhere? 